What are we doing today? Hey folks, we're in a crawl space. Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a radar mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for the radar mitigators, those looking to get into business. If you're home, of course, you can stay and hang out. Good place to go if you're looking for a radar mitigator is right down here, www.nrsb.org. That's the National Radar Safety Board. Just go to that site, plug in your zip code, and that'll bring up a list of certified radar pros in your area. So today, we are doing a crawl space encapsulation in combination with sub-slab depressurization system. And you know, it's something I do commonly, and I look back upon my library of almost 100 videos at this point, and um, I don't really have one that focuses on that simple thing. And it's, it's simple, but it's not easy, and we're going to focus exclusively on that today. And so here, we're in this crawl space beginning for a reason directly on the opposite side of this little pipe here is where our fan will go. All right, so when we begin a system, we always start with the fan. Well, I do, and it's worked well for me, and, and perhaps it'll work well for you if you're looking to get into this business. So every time I go to a job, no matter what we're doing, I always sing, to, I always sing this song to myself, it's all about that fan, about that fan, about that fan. It's all about that fan. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and Megan Trainer stole that from me, and now she's a big, famous, pretty rich rock star, and I'm here in a crawl space. Where's the justice in this world? It's not fair. But what I do <laughs> is I start with the fan. Why? Because everything radiates from the fan. The exhaust pipe radiates from the fan. The suction point radiates from the fan all right so and that's because you have to get your measurements and on and placement on all the other things radiating from the fan so here i'll give you a quick glimpse and now i need to get back to work but don't worry i'll show you how we come along all right so our pipe's going to go that way and make its way out into the uh, basement living area there's our door or entrance to the crawl space and we're gonna get to work here. Okay, some time has passed and we've been busy. So out there, um, I'll take you out here in just a minute. That is the uh, basement area. And we've got three inch pipe run out there. We're making our way back towards the fan. And right here, uh, we've got it reduced down and we've got smaller pipe teed out to multiple suction points with a valve because we want to divert most of the suction out there. So we've got a way to control that. So, so if you watch my channel, you'll see oftentimes in crawl spaces, I'll use four inch corrugated pipe that's perforated with either slits or holes to draw air better. Uh, this is a pretty small crawl space. So I've had pretty good luck uh, using just rigid pipe with multiple suction points. So we've got three suction points here. So this brown pipe right here is just some extra pipe that we used on a plumbing project where we had to paint it. We painted too much, but nevertheless, we primed and glued all the pieces and we'll be good enough to do what we're trying to accomplish today. And we've got the pipe routed out there connected to the fan. Okay, so I'm actually at a Starbucks editing this video for you. And there's something that I didn't point out in the video when I was making it is that all those suction points, they're all sloped down. So you want to make sure if you're going to get in this business to make sure and have your suction points sloping down like a drain because radon systems uh, generate condensation, which is the fancy word for water, and it must drain out. If your pipes are not sloped properly, they'll stay in the system and clog it up. thought that was worthy of mentioning before I wrap this thing up. Okay. Well, I've got exactly 40 feet of small pipe there doing all of this. So if you get in a situation like you're doing this, just bring a lot more than you think you'll need because it gets gobbled up quick. So now we're out here and we're gonna make this big suction point. Uh, I'm gonna kick it out from this water heater and I'll tell you why. Okay, so I've got this 90 and Street 45. They're glued, but it's dry fitted on here. And I've got it set up in such a way that this is my little trick. If you watch my channel, I use 
it's a plumb bob trick. It's just uh, some plywood, hole saw cut, uh, some Gorilla tape for gription, stuck up here, plumb bob right here. We find center every single time. So I've got it kicked out because we're gonna be removing a lot of content from under this slab. And I don't wanna remove too much gravel from under there that might weaken this concrete because this water heater is awfully heavy. That's why I'm kicking it out like this. Okay, so that hole right there is from where I just probed earlier to uh, see if I was gonna pull back mud uh, to determine uh, if we we're going to, if it's going to be a high suction system or not. I did not pull back any mud, so a clean bit usually means gravel. So that helped us determine uh, the conventional fan that we decided to use. So anyway, I got lucky it's going to be in the footprint of this, so it'll be fine. So we pulled a good bit of gravel out of this hole. It's always a good day when you can just suck it out with a, a heavy duty shot back. You'll notice that this hole is considerably bigger than this hole, yet we're still using three inch pipe. I do that on purpose for these suction points because I want, I want to have room to dig around and move around. If it's a guaranteed slam dunk that there's going to be gravel under there, I probably would have used a, a four bit to accommodate a three inch pipe, but that rarely happens. So I just err on the side of caution. We excavated like that and kind of stopped over here because we don't want to take away support from underneath this water heater. So these bits right here, just so you, you know, if you're new to this. So this is a four inch bit that we use to accommodate three inch pipe. This is a five inch bit that accommodates four inch pipe, just so you don't get confused. Stop that. Stop. Okay, wait, oh no. <laughs> All right, so you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world are we gonna do? about this big honking hole around this small pipe. Well, I've got a hack. So what you could do is use an adapter and expand and you know use a four inch piece. But I'll tell you what, pipe and fittings have gotten awfully expensive recently. So I've got a hack. And my hack is conduit. I just I did a little measuring and I thought, huh, if I bend half inch conduit around there, that kind of jives mathematically. And lo and behold, it works. So I'll show you what I've been getting away with. All right, so there you have it. You got conduit put in there and that works. So we're gonna fill that with high grade silicone and that'll be just fine. And just kind of a little in between where we are and where we're headed. So I'm gonna get the rest of this up. Um, we've had good luck just using a uh, caulk. Um, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, White Lightning. Learned that from uh, the student in Crawl Space Ninja. He's got a YouTube channel dedicated to just crawl spaces. And uh, it's good enough for him, so it's been working for us. You could tack it up, but uh, this has been just fine with White Lightning and Gorilla Tape where needed. And then expanding foam if you got something really gappy to fill. But I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this in. See you on the other side. Well, this was done with six mil black plastic. You can get it at any Lowe's or Home Depot. And just adhered it with good old caulk, white lightning to be specific, and Gorilla Tape. And we filled in some gaps here with expanding. But we're going to make a door to uh, seal off the crawl space from the rest of the house. We're moving a good bit of air right there. Door is in. Let's go see how we made out outside. This customer happens to roast his own coffee and I'm gonna get a pound or two from him. That's pretty cool. Somewhere along the way, I decided that I like people and I'm interested in people. In this business, you get to meet a lot of people. A lot of them are cool. 
So by the way, this is how we're getting juice to the fan. This was the closest, there's an outlet on the other side of this wall in the garage. And so we uh, wired into that outlet, junction box here, long run. This is about a record here for us, about 25 feet or so of wire through that conduit. There's our switch, there's our fan, there is our exhaust. So I painted this oversized downspout yesterday to have it ready for today's job. And we've got critter guard up at the top. It's this mesh stuff here that keeps leaves and debris and squirrels and birds out, but allows air to pass through. And there's a persnickety part of me that would have liked to have used a gray fan. They do make gray fans and I was just out of them today. So this is the most suddenly seen side of the house. So I don't feel too bad about it. Not bad. Works with a Tudor style home. Hey, I hope you picked up something today. If you did, by all means, smash that like button and consider subscribing. I drop lots of content in the Radon community. It doesn't cost you a dime. It means the world to me. Thanks for watching. See you later. Oh my gosh, it smells so freaking good. That's what fresh coffee does. It actually bubbles. Almost like a soda pop. I know, Willie, it's crazy. Crazy.